From the outside, the Razer Viper V3 does not look like a very interesting release, but going into it a little bit deeper, and it's actually one of the most amazing releases in terms of bang for buck we have seen this year. The tech for example is pretty much the same as on Razer's flagship mice, so you can use the mouse with Razer's 4K dongle, but the performance even with the standard dongle is very very good. For example, motion latency matches the flagship mice from other brands with 1000Hz apart from Vaxi. Click latency is also impressive and it's only beaten by Asus mice at 1000Hz. And looking at the results with the 4K dongle, these match other Razer 4K mice, so these are unbeaten in terms of motion latency and click latency. In terms of performance, I wouldn't call this mouse a budget mouse by any means, for example, it just beats the Logitech G Pro X Superlight with any polling rate setting. With 1K and 2K, the motion latency is pretty much the same, but the click latency is twice as low. Even all the features in the mouse are good as there are no complaints from me for the side buttons, the scroller wheel and the main clicks and even the mouse feet. The clicks are light and they are easy to actuate with some nice tactility and there is basically no side to side wobble but there is quite a bit of pre travel and some post travel. The main thing that can draw some complaints in my opinion is the fact that Razer is using a replaceable battery with this one. And the weight for example with the included battery is 82 grams, but if you just get a set of lithium ion AAA batteries you can get the weight down to 64 grams. This makes the mouse lightweight enough for me without any kind of problematic weight balancing issues. Keep in mind that using a AAA battery will of course affect the battery life, and it will also screw up the battery life meter in Synapse. One thing that is quite interesting in the mouse is the sensor position which is very far forward considering for the shape, and initially it did feel quite weird for me in game but it's just something you need to get used to. I do not have a huge preference on sensor position but I do consider central location to be the most safe. The shape is also quite interesting and mainly because it's not exactly like the Viper V2 Pro that we are very used to, but it has more of a hump a little bit towards the back of the mouse, making it feel a little bit more comfortable for a claw, but it also makes the mouse feel a little bit longer. That is due to the higher profile and the hump which forces your hand into a more of an upward angle and therefore your fingers can't reach quite as far forward as they would if the mouse were more flat. But it's not strictly just for a claw as it does feel nice for even fingertip grip at 64 grams with the AAA lithium ion battery. It does feel okay even for palm grip but it's much better for relaxed kind of claws in my opinion than palm due to the higher profile and the hump. Overall it's a very impressive package for 70 bucks. One could argue that almost all the features in the mouse are actually better than in the G Pro X Superlite 2, which is over twice the price of this one, with the stock feet being better but sadly I did have to change them because I do disassemble mice for reviews, the main mouse buttons being better, side buttons being better, the scroll wheel is pretty much the same. I do prefer the GPX2 coding over the Viper V3 Pro or the V3 and I do prefer the GPX2 shape. But even though all the features and the mouse overall is very impressive, the mouse is still nowhere near close to my own top 5 of mice that I actually want to use and maybe not even in the top 10. It's hard to say that this mouse is not great value for money because it very much is so. It does not lack anything that I would say. The replaceable battery is something that some people can complain about, it's not really an issue for me. I can just fine use a lithium ion AAA battery that is included, uh, that I have right here and some tin foil to make it work. Not a problem at all for me, 64 grams light enough weight for sure for me. And even some professional players are actually using this. I saw some tweets about Valorant players using this one, so it's nice to see that people are using not just the flagship mice, but also some more budget-oriented mice. And I guess the players that choose this over the Viper V2 Pro are choosing it because of the shape. So they, they do like the higher profile, maybe the sensor precision. Those are two things that, that are very unique to this mouse. And maybe two things that you would like to try out, so why not do that at this price point? I guess that's pretty much it for this review, so hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, see you in the next one.